How you doing guys? Welcome to another video. This is still topic 3 periodicity and in this one we're looking at the trends in the periodic table. Let's go. Alright, topic 3.2, what are the trends in the periodic table? We look at the important definitions which you really need to know, we identify the trends and then we have a look at what is in the data book. For topic 3.2, the key understandings are basically the trends in atomic radius, ionic radius, ion, ionization energy, electron affinity, and electronegativity. What we're not going to cover in this is how the oxide change as we move across period 3. We're going to do that in topic 8, so check that link out if you need that section. Okay, so the arrangement of the periodic table allows us to make predictions about elements even if we know little about the elements themselves, because we know that things in the same group have similar chemical and physical properties. So we need to talk about patterns within a group, so the vertical columns, or we need to talk about patterns in a period. And when we talk about patterns in a period, we only need to know about period three. The things we need to know are atomic radius, ionic radius, ionization energy, electron affinity, and electronegativity. So the first one, electronegativity. Electronegativity is a measure of how hungry an atom is for electrons. It's how much it wants to gain or rip those electrons from anything that's got them floating around. Now the data for electronegativity can be found on page 8 of the data booklet. The definition though, you need to get this down. The ability of an atom or nucleus to attract a pair of electrons in a bond. So if we have hydrogen fluoride for example, that bond has two electrons. Hydrogen has an electronegativity of 2.2. Fluorine has an electronegativity of 4.0, which is much greater than the hydrogen. So that means the electron in the bond is closer to the fluorine nucleus. It's attracting that electron more strongly. It's got a greater share of that bonding pair of electrons. So in reality, the electrons sit a little bit closer to the fluorine. What that means is that fluorine feels a slight negative charge. So we say it has a partial negative charge, or the hydrogen has a partial positive charge. If we look at different things on the periodic table, we can describe them as kind of being electrophobic or electrophiles. Now things that are electrophobic are scared of electrons, or they don't want to accept electrons easily. Those type of things are the metals. The metals generally have a low electronegativity. The electrophiles are things that really want to gain electrons, they're hungry for electrons, and that's generally the non-metals. They want to gain electrons to have a full outer shell, or the metals want to lose electrons to have a full outer shell. Now the general trend is as we go down the group, the electronegativity decreases, and as we go across the period, the electronegativity increases. If we're moving from metals to non-metals, then it makes sense that the electronegativity will increase. <laughs> Fluorine is the most electronegative element. It wants to gain electrons more strongly than any other, and francium is one of the least electronegative elements. Okay, the data for ionic and atomic radius can be found on page 9 of the data booklet. Now, the atomic radius is simply the radius which is measured as half the distance between neighbouring nuclei. And the atomic radius is the top part of this periodic table on page 9. The bottom part is the ionic radius. The radius is measured in picometers, which is times 10 to the negative 12 meters. So you can refer to something as picometers. Now the atomic radius, think of the atoms as spheres, and it's just the distance from the nucleus to the outermost electrons of the atom. And that's considered the atomic radius. The bigger the radius, the bigger the atom. The smaller the radius, the smaller the atom. The ionic radius is the distance from the nucleus to the outer shell of electrons in an ion. So with ions, some things can form positive ions, some can form negative ions. Generally, as atoms lose electrons, they become smaller in size, and as they gain them, they become larger in size. So the general trend in atomic radius is it increases as we go down a group and decreases as we go across the period. And for the ionic radius, it decreases for the positive ions and decreases for the negative ions, but it also increases as we go down the group. We'll look at how to explain those trends in the next video. This one, we just want to identify. The positive ions here, I've identified in red for period three, 
and then the yellow I've identified in in yellow. The other ones are in green. Sorry about that. So the green ones form positive ions, so they decrease. The yellow ones form negative ions, so they decrease as well. Okay, first ionization energy is a measure of an attraction between the nucleus and these outer electrons. Ionization energies are measured in a unit called kilojoules per mole, and the data for this can be found on page 8 of the data booklet. Now, when you have a look at page 8, there's two different things. We're looking at the top left-hand one for ionization energy, and it's measured in kilojoules per mole, which is essentially how much energy is required to remove that electron. Now, the definition of ionization energy, this is an important one. The minimum energy required to remove a valence electron from a gaseous atom to form a gaseous ion. You must use the words gaseous in this definition. Everything here will occur in the gas state. So we might be asked to write an equation to show the first ionization energy of sodium. So if there is sodium, it's got a fairly low, a low ionization energy. So to write the equation, we would have Na gas going to Na plus as a gas, a sodium ion, plus one electron. And E minus stands for an electron, and in this reaction, we are removing an electron from a sodium atom to form a sodium ion. The first ionization energy of neon, neon as a gas, goes to neon as a positively charged ion, plus one electron. Again, it's simply just removing an electron from the outer shell of the atom. The trend for ionization energy, it increases as we go across the periodic table and decreases as we go down. Using the graph, we can kind of see that. If you have a look at period one, hydrogen to helium, that shows the general trend. Period two, we can see quite an increase as we go from lithium to neon. And from period three, you can also see that as we go from sodium to argon, it gets much harder to remove electrons. If we're looking at trends in a group, here you can see lithium, sodium, and potassium. And even though it's slight, it does decrease as we go down one of the groups. And that's true for all of the different. Okay, electron affinity. Electron affinity is how an atom behaves when it accepts an electron. The definition of electron affinity is... The first electron affinity of an element is the change in energy when one mole of electrons is added to one mole of gaseous atoms to form one mole of gaseous ions. So here we have the metals which require energy because they, we need to force them to gain electrons because they don't want to do it very readily because they're electrophobic. So what's going to happen here is they're going to have a higher electron affinity it's going to have a positive number because we've got to give it energy to make it accept an electron. For a non-metal, a non-metal is electrophobic, electro, electrophilic, and electrophilic means that a non-metal will generally release energy as it accepts an electron. So the energy released when it has a negative value is known as exothermic, which means give out, and if the energy added is positive, that means it's endothermic, which means it has to be absorbed. So we're giving the system energy. So for instance, an example would be if we wanted to have sodium. Sodium plus one electron will form a sodium ion. Again, all in the gas state. So that is the first electron affinity of sodium. And that's going to have a very negative value. It's going to have a very positive value because it's an unlikely type of reaction. Sodium doesn't want to gain an electron. It would much rather lose an electron. In fact, its energy is negative 53 kilojoules per mole. Cut that shit out. The general trend is it decreases as we go down a group and it increases as we go across a period. Melting point. The data in the melting point can be found on page 7 of the data booklet. Melting points are based upon the bonds in either the molecule or in the metal. When we have metals, they have metallic bonding, and they have a delocalized electrons which the ions are attracted to. So we have positive ions that are attracted to negatively charged electrons. Covalent bonding, though, contains weak attractions between the molecules but those attractions increase as the number of electrons in the compound increases. And we go into that in the next video. 
When discussing the melting point, we only need to consider group 1 and group 7. So as we go down group 1, what you can see by the data is that it decreases. So group 1, the melting point decreases. For group 17, though, as we go down the group, we can see that the melting point increases. The melting temperatures are greater. So we have group 1, which decrease, and group 17, that increase. So we've got these opposites going on, so the IB like to ask questions about that. Topic 3.2, some top tips. Make sure you know the definitions pretty much word for word. Make sure you can identify the basic trends. And remember, you don't get a data book in period in paper one. So you need to make sure that you can know some of those trends. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget, drop a like on the video, subscribe for more, and I'll see you next time.